Hello YouTube, it is Chris here. Hope every single person had a wonderful Christmas and New Year holiday. Now it is 2016, so come and join me while we go over my brand new, for 2016, Everyday Carry items. Welcome back everybody, thank you for sticking with me. Now, in today's video, going over my new lineup for 2016, I realized I have a lot of crap. So, uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is break down all of the knives that are going to be in my lineup so far for the beginning of the year for 2016, and then we are going to jump into my everyday carry, what I've got on me this week. Let's start off with... The front row, the flashlights. Now, as you guys know, um, I'm a big proponent for through nights. Um, high powered flashlights, very durable, very cost effective. Let's start with the newest piece first. This bad boy right here is not the tit from through night. This is the tie high by through night. And it's a triple A battery, single triple A battery, but it was made the full body, it was a single body titanium um, flashlight. So, like always, I had some fun and anodized it because it's kind of awesome. And no, it doesn't fry the circuitry. Oh, look at that, because I'm awesome. No, it's, um, if something is waterproof or water resistant, uh, you shouldn't have a problem doing electro anodizing. A lot of people have issues using a torch because that's how they anodize. They don't have the equipment, the uh, professional equipment to do that. And yes, you're going to fry the circuitry when you take a 600 to 1000 degree torch on titanium, you will destroy the circuitry, so don't do it. Yes, you guys have seen the, the T10T, which is the AA version, it's a little bit bigger, but it's, uh, I love this thing, I've had it for a while. It's really, really bright, still convenient for me to carry, and on those days that I'm feeling ultra tactical, or I don't feel like showing off bright, shiny colors, I have the TIE 3, still one of my favorites from Through Night, even though I've had this for a little while, but Another AAA battery uh, design, really easy to throw on to my keychain if I need to, not a big deal. But enough about all that weirdness. Let's move on to the really cool part of the video. It's all the sharp, the sharp stuff right there. Yeah, all of this. Now, at first glance, you are going to see a lot of cold steel knives. Well, yeah, because cold steel doesn't suck. But my only gripe with them over the past couple years was their steel. Like I have mentioned in previous videos, their steel drove me up the wall. Aus 8. God freaking darn, dude. Oh my gosh. I What? Aus 8. No way. You can... No, I don't like it. It's too soft to me. Um, it's good budget price steel. So when you're in a budget price category, you're doing good. But cold steel just knocked it out of the ballpark by adding... Uh, BD1 and XHP steels, they're carpenter steels, and adding DLC coatings to their blades, to some of them. And they totally got rid of that weird Tough X coating that was no better than $3 Walmart spray paint that comes off as soon as someone sneezes on it. So that was really exciting for me. But we're going to go from this side on the front row, and we're going to move our way that way, and we're, then we're going to touch on the ferociously large knives that are seemingly too obnoxious to carry all right so it's my mini attila it's my pocket cleaver design from my company dfs blade works um it's been getting a lot of attention on instagram and facebook lately a lot of people are asking about it and wanting to try to get to order one but sadly my uh yeah that was a commanding snap but sadly um the, my website is shut down. We're not accepting any custom orders right now because, well, in the summertime and early, early to late summertime, we had a slew of orders, like a ridiculous amount of orders. So far, what we're doing right now is we're accepting a very, very, very small uh, limited amount of reservation orders. Uh, we're in full production mode. Just, I mean, I'm skimming by just trying to get things done as fast as I can. 
but yeah, that's where we're at. So enough about my business. Let's move on to the rest of the video. All right. My Horizon C by Riate Knives. It is amazing. I love this knife. Um, not something I would use as a hard use blade due to the fact that it is a um, frame lock design and it's right now it's very early stages of lock up. Uh, I've never tested to see how strong the locking mechanism is. I carry this knife because I think it's elegant, nice looking, it's very sharp. For normal, everyday uh, carry tasks, it's very simple, easy to use, um, extremely sharp, holds an edge very well due to the fact that it's uh, made from S35EN. And it's a really good talking point. It's a really nice knife, excluding all of those fingerprints you see all over it. Um, I don't apologize for the messiness. I know some people would white glove it and go nuts, but that's not really who I am. So I like to use the blades. Something that finally made my rotation again, due to the fact that I started missing it a little bit, was the Paramilitary 2 by Spyderco. I really like this knife. Um, it's priced in the same range as you would see uh, a lot of cold steel knives. Priced at, it's really, really, really ergonomic. Really lightweight. And out of all of the locks that are not a um, triad lock, my favorite locks that I have used and tested is either a compression lock or an axis lock, which is by the company Benchmade, which you guys are actually going to see Benchmade on my channel this year. So no, I'm not necessarily on a cold steel bandwagon, but it was Christmas and there was a lot of sales on Blade HQ, so I took full advantage of that. Next up is a Schrade knife, something you guys haven't seen. Let's recenter all this stuff. Now, um, I haven't reviewed anything from Schrade in a very long time, and... Well, I figured it was due time, so I contacted them and asked them, I was like, hey, I'm interested in reviewing some folding knives you guys have. Um, my channel's kind of taken a turn towards everyday carry. I'd really like to do it. Um, what's some new awesome stuff you guys got to check out? So I took a look at the 503 series. Uh, it's a brand new knife design for them. It's really, really, really nice, actually. Um, it's the SCH 503 RB. This is the same exact knife you saw me give away in my Christmas giveaway not too long ago. And yes, I was sent two of them. Now it is sporting OS 8, I know. However, as far as the design of it goes, I think they got it right. Um, they got rid of the hollow grind for, um, this particular design, I don't, I'm not a super big fan of hollow grinds. I do understand for EDC blades, they do make them, um, cause them to be sharper because they can get to a more acute point. However, you can run into the problem of blade rolling and all that stuff and chipping because there's not a lot of steel backing it up on the grind area down at the bevel and the edge. But anyway, um, I do like the design. It looks really, really, really handsome. It's very smooth actually. And it's sporting their new Sherlock design. So I'll be taking this bad boy and getting it all nasty and messy and destroying it and dulling the crap out of it and seeing how the finish holds up, the edge holds up, and just giving it in a whirl. Um, I do like the handles. Um, it has like this little plastic rubber um, overmold here with the colored sections in red. Um, they're actually kind of soften the handle up a little, make it a little more comfortable. And this is a slightly newer um, pocket clip design. I really like that. It's pretty cool. Um, some people are really crazy about, you know, either being a really deep pocket carry clip or not. I don't have a problem if the blade sticks out a little bit or a little bit more than that due to the fact that I can reach in and grab it pretty easy. Uh, I don't mind the knife sticking out a little bit. It doesn't bother me. Um, it's a knife. It's a tool. That's what I use it for. And I don't see any issues with it. So... This is the Schrade 503RB. You are going to see this bad boy getting hard use tested in every way imaginable to see if the new locking mechanism and the new blade design is up to par. It would be a lot of fun to check it out. 
Okay, so we're going to keep going in this direction. This is the American Lawman, which is making its first appearance on my channel by Cold Steel. And yes, I have uh, EDC'd this a little bit already. Now, I do clean the blades off, and I don't let them get all nasty and dirty if they don't have to. Um, it's just kind of like not my thing. Um, and I can't get this thing to zoom, really? No focusing today, really? Nothing? Okay. Well, you'll see a little bit of like that little uh, sticky residue from tape, packaging tape. But, um... This is the American Lawman in OD Green D10 liners. This was a limited edition. I got this on Blade HQ for Christmas. It is sporting the CTX, really? Come on, thank you. The CTX at XHP steel, which I love. Yes, it's sporting a hollow grind, but it has a really good knife, um, really good knife steel behind it, so for this kind of knife, I really wouldn't hard use it. Um, despite the fact that it has sporting the um, triad lock, it's just hollow guard knives. I know that they are very EDC um, friendly to make sure you get those really nice, sharp, quick cuts, but um, they're not really designed for super hard use due to the fact that you can break the blade pretty easy if you do anything stupid. But I really like this knife. It's extremely thin, just like you will find in the code four and it's really lightweight. I like it a lot, like it's really light. I mean, it's like nothing, there's nothing going on. It almost feels cheap, but I know it's not because I've used it quite a bit and I've had a lot of fun with it. So next up is the Code 4. Oh, I love this knife. It is an all around, as far as the looks go, a gentleman's folder. Very nice. It's made of, the blade is also made out of XHP. And it this, this knife is super, super sharp right out of the box. Probably the sharpest out of all of them, save for the Espadas that will be shown up very soon. Nice clean grinds on them. Uh, the handle scales are made out of aluminum, so they can be anodized and modded if you choose to. It could be kind of fun to keep in mind if you do that it'll void the warranty but um i like to carry this one in the american llama most often as a backup blade due to the fact that i can pretty much use it and forget it i just do what i need to do with them every day as the um backup carry blade for opening things up doing you know menial tasks and i kind of just forget about it but they're so lightweight, I literally actually forget about them. I forget they're there. And I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, wait, where's this? Oh, yeah, it's in this pocket. So next up is the Ultimate Hunter, which um, has already made a presence on my channel. I use this one for the backup EDC blades the most often due to the fact that it's a really simple design. I like it a lot. You can see all the scratches and stuff on the blade. It's okay. It's still a good knife. It's holding an edge very, very well. It's a little dirty. I'm gonna have to clean it up. But it has a really good design for the G10. It kind of creates a nice palm swell. So it makes it a little bit more comfortable, um, which is a big difference to the flat um, aluminum and G10 from the Code 4 and the American Lama. Not saying this is uncomfortable at all, but if you're going to have to use um, an everyday carry knife in a longer term situation, let's say you um, happen to work in a warehouse or something where you are cutting a lot of um, stuff up, the, the, regardless of what you're cutting up, but you're cutting up a lot, having that extra ergonomic feel is really, really nice. And this is something because of the blade design, this is Ultimate Hunter. I'm like, hmm. So are you telling me that this could be a good backup blade if you're out in the woods? Well, screw it. I'm going to go do that this year. Um, got a lot of plans for some uh, camping and outdoor trips this year, which is going to be a lot of fun. Something I really couldn't do very easily um, before, given uh, my work schedule and everything. But things are very, very different now, and it's a big blessing. 
So you guys are gonna see that. So that is the ultimate hunter. Now, moving on to my all around, uh, I would say classic favorite. Let's say classic favorite, so we can leave an addendum for any new favorites that might end up popping up. But this is the Recon 1, also sporting, uh, oh, that thing's dirty. Also sporting uh, CTX at XHP. This knife is definitely not a stranger on my channel. This thing has been around for a very long time due to the fact that it was a first look, first look exclusive from Blade Show 2014. So this blade has been through the ringer. It has gone head to head with quite a few knives. Uh, the DLC coating, even though I have banged this thing up, it's still holding up so freaking well. And I have tried to destroy this blade and I can't. Um, yes, I know I could if I took like a chisel and a hammer to it or try to shoot it with a gun, but are you serious? I mean, the whole point is to test the knife and see what it can do, not try to purposely destroy it. So, I guess you would say, so far, this is the big three. Now, there are going to be a lot more knives coming from Cold Steel and a lot of other companies this year. But as for what I have, these are the big three, and that will change. Uh, next up is the Cold Steel Spartan. Oh, look at that. It just screams like just excellence. This is like sub $80 excellence. This is, uh, it does not get any better than this. And I'm trying to give you guys a lot of close-ups if you haven't noticed. So you guys can see the profile. Check it out. Kind of close-up. It's the best you can get considering the fact you can't touch it. It's got steel liners in there. And now I get to see it all close-up. I'm like, oh, it's dirty. I gotta go clean it up. Um, yes, after I use knives. And yes, I EDC this knife. Some people are like, that's overkill. Why would you do that? Because I want to. That's why. I carry the knives because I like them and I want to. Not because anyone else tells me so or tells me to do certain things or because it's ridiculous. I carry knives because I want to. That's kind of aggravating. It's little speckled rust spots on there. It's supposed to be stainless steel, but like I said, uh, for some reason, San Antonio this year has been extremely rainy. Now on to the Big Berthas. Now... For those of you, again, who follow me on Instagram and Facebook and whatnot, and also follow Cold Steel, I know you have actually seen these on their feeds due to the fact that Cold Steel several times, since I've gotten them not even a month ago, has reposted them several times. Um, not a favoritism thing, it's just these knives are so badass, I'm just like, oh, I gotta show them off. It's just, I like showing them off. These are... Um, for the production category of knives are probably my crown jewel because they're really cool looking and yeah you hear that snap with a triad lock activating it's this thing is a monster um it these are based off the navaja which is um a very old school Spanish design. It was back in the day when like peasants weren't allowed to have like weapons and stuff. So they made these monstrosities of folders so they could carry them and use like, they were like, oh yeah, these are tools. <laughs> the blades were like twice as big as this. I mean, I've seen some old cool school pictures and they were just retardedly huge knives. And they use them every day when they're out in the fields or working in their shops and stuff. And then if they got into a scuffle, they had a 9, 10, 11 inch blade to just whip out and be like, no, this is my property. So they were able to use it as a really effective um, everyday carry in that situation and self-defense tool. Uh, it's a very, very, very acute point. A really, really sharp blade. Also made of uh, CTX X XHP. So far for the new steel lineup for the Espadas, these are the only two available out of the G10 models. They have not come out with the, I would say the flashy and polished ones that uh, most people know if you like watch Expendables or have been to their website and see the uber expensive versions. Now, do I plan on getting all six variants of the Espada? Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The only thing I was waiting on was the new steel. That's all I was waiting on. Uh, I just, I was like, ah, $400 for all sake? No, no way. Hell no. So 
I just could not justify it. Now, XH, CTS, CTS, XHB, absolutely. It is used in high-end knives. It's, it's a steel that I am going to be playing around with in my knife shop. With stainless steel, I think that um, XHP and S35VN will be two really nice high-grade, high-performing stainless steels that I think just make sense for my outdoor knives. Uh, there'll be nice big hunks of it. But I love this knife. I mean, this knife, considering its size, the five and a half inch blade, which, yes, in San Antonio is legal carry now due to the fact that knife rights being awesome in all, all of its glory fought for our right to carry um, the size knife that we are allowed to carry everywhere else in Texas just couldn't do it in certain cities. So that law was passed September 1st, 2015. So for you guys who are local in San Antonio, that city ordinance saying that you can't have this knife for that knife for this design or this length, no, that's not correct anymore. I'll move my tripod real quick. You can carry up to a five and a half inch blade. You carry a 5.55 inch blade, you're getting it taken away. Um, but yes, you can legally have a five and a half inch blade, fixed blade, folding, doesn't matter. You're allowed to have it. Whatever is legal in the state of Texas, you can have. Anyway, this monster that I'm gonna have, it, yeah, there we go. Look at, holy freaking crap. This is the extra large G10 Espada, brand new from Cold Steel. Seven and a half inch blade. Seven and a half. This thing is enormous. Overall length of almost 17 inches. Almost 17 inches long. This is just a monster. Sporting the triad lock with like a steel frame backup. I kind of took it apart and I looked at it. It is, ugh, it is enormous. Uh, due to the fact that the blade is so long, and the weight of this knife is so just monstrositous, just extra special big. Um, I believe what they did, let's, yeah, there we go. Let's go to focusing. Yeah, um, the DLC coating is very friendly to um, fingerprints. So that's gonna annoy you if you're that kind of person. But I wanna, I wanna show you the OTB sharpness of this blade really quick. So we're gonna cut right about now. Wow, I'm still talking. This knife is really big and really, really sharp. Now, if this was legal to carry in Texas and San Antonio, would I carry it? Hell yes, I would. Now, I've brought it around for, um, cause you're allowed to have it in your house and you're allowed to transport it to your car and into another building to kind of whatever, but you can't EDC it. So there's these weird loopholes to it, uh, what you can and can't do with it in the state of Texas and that's fine, but I have transported this in my vehicle so I could do a small little show and tell with some friends and kind of let them see it outside of pictures. And most people go, oh my gosh, that is a machete. Holy crap. And I'm like, pretty much. Would I carry it? And yeah, it's really lightweight. It's actually really balanced, really lightweight. And don't let the fact that it's freaking insanely huge fool you. It's decently comfortable to carry considering it's monstrosity size. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. Well, this isn't really everyday carry, but it's on my glove box. This is a glove box survival kit. Um, it's like a supplement to a get home bag. Um, basically, it's stuff that I would want to waste and go through first before I have to dip into that. Um, I kind of live off the concept that two is one and one is none. So this is my two to my uh, everyday carry survival bag that it's in my vehicle as well. Um, this beautiful little thing right here is my key organizer from a Cobra Kydex gear. You guys have seen this in uh, a video. Oops, I put the keys in crooked. It's okay. And this is my charge port for my phone. This is an emergency charge port. Uh, I do have a really long six foot cable coiled one um, that sits in the car, but if I take it out or someone else is using it, um, or if someone else needs a quick charge and we're at a spot where there's a wall outlet or something, I carry this with me. I've found it is extremely, extremely helpful, extremely useful. Uh, next up, I got my wallet. I went back to the recycled firefighter wallet this week. It is among what I would say my top three favorites. 
Now, have I tried every wallet in the world? No. Have I tried a lot? Yes. So I have a sampling saying this is one of my favorites. Okay, this is my phone. It's, uh, I got a text message that I did not read. Okay, so it's my Galaxy S4 with OtterBox on there. I'm getting a new phone very probably next month. Uh, more than likely, it'll be an iPhone due to the fact that every device in my house other than our phones are Apple devices, so I can communicate with the kids a little bit easier at home with Apple devices and everything. And everyone's like, yeah! Some of my friends are like, you're the iPhone elitist. And I'm like, no, I, I switch back to Galaxy every now and then. Every couple years, I just kind of flop, flip back and forth to see what's new, see what they got. I just kind of have fun. I love technology. Now, this is my bovine nipple butter chapstick, utter stick. You've seen it before. I love this stuff to death. Um, in my opinion, it um, with it's just the best stuff out there. It's really good. For drier chap lips, you just can't beat it, in my opinion. Now, you guys saw me talking about this a little bit ago. This is the Thai High in titanium, and it is my me and AAA battery. Really nice pocket design. Going to be doing a review on this one individually. Now... Plasmatic lighter. I went back to the original. I love this one, the Zippo style. It's really cool. Not the slimmest design, but still works. I like it. Water resistant. I haven't ha I've had this for several, several months. I haven't had any issues with it. And I enjoy it thoroughly. Paracord bracelet. It's a paracord bracelet. Whistle buckle. Now, the quick side note, not to take too too long. I know this video is getting a little longer than I would like as I'm watching the recording uh, seconds and minutes fly by. I have a new, um, some paracord stuff coming up on my channel. It's going to be showcasing all the new, like, buckle designs coming out lately for paracording. It's really sick, the stuff that you can buy online now. Um, on the internet, they got the fire steels, handcuff keys, LED lights, um, handcuff key and whistle buckles. Um, I've seen some really cool designs from some people on um, Facebook and Instagram, some friends of mine locally are having fun with the whistle buckles, um, adding a bunch of stuff like fire steel and compasses, uh, just like some other stuff that I had. And like, you'll see the thumbnail video if you go back to and watch that. There's the compasses and there's fishing kits inside of them. I mean, it's nothing new to the survival world, having a survival kit bracelet, but I'm going to be having some fun with that, showing you guys some stuff that I found online. And I'll probably end up building one for myself and kind of let you guys check that out. Um, this is a moon glow resin ring from my friend at Tahoe Vision on Instagram. It's really cool. Uh, it's just fun. I like wearing uh, rings from time to time. It's a lot of fun. That's what I'm doing this week. Uh, it's a good talking point. And I like things that go in the dark. It's just my thing. Okay, this is my tack marker from the Permanent Mark. This is the extra large size tack. Uh, so the spike is a little bit longer. And this is marketed as an emergency glass breaker. So it's something you can have for yourself in emergency if you don't have um, a knife or a tool in your glove box that's already dedicated to that uh, source in case you get into a vehicular accident or you get stuck in somewhere like a, um, a building that's on fire and you need to break glass, get out. My watch... I like it. It tells time. It's kind of how it is. And yes, I'm filming the day before the review comes out because the review's coming out tomorrow. So it's Tuesday at 3 o'clock, Central Time, my time. Um, I like this watch a lot. It's a G Shock. Not an expensive one either. This is like 70 bucks. All right. Slide stuff over. Leatherman Sidekick. God, am I a proponent of this freaking multi tool or what? I just can't shut up about it. I like the spring-assisted pliers. I love the built-in pocket clip. Yes, you can take it off, but it's kind of was just always there. So I've never taken it off. Um, it's a good all-around tool. It's got enough tools on it for almost everything you would need. It's just, in my opinion, you can't go wrong. It's not super expensive. It's not super full-size. So when you're carrying a lot of stuff on you, it kind of just works. Now, due to the fact that I am doing a review for Shrade, an honest, thorough review, despite the fact that I got this for free. I am EDCing the Shrade SCH503RB. It's got the new Sherlock design. It actually causes it to be very smooth. And <clears throat> there's no blade play, which is really refreshing. A lot of uh, Shrade folders that I've had 
have a little bit of blade play in them to start for starting. I didn't have to adjust the pivot screw or anything. I was really happy about that. It kind of just was perfect from the get-go. The um, Oh, yeah, I need to show you guys this. This was actually pretty impressive, too. For a very budget-friendly knife, look at the centering on that. Now, I can't say every single one's going to be that way, but this was just some random one that I picked up out of the box and decided to open this one. I mean, it's perfectly centered. Okay, it's the large... G10 Espada by Cold Steel. Yes, I EDC this bad boy a lot. Anyone who knows me personally knows this knife is always on me. I love this knife. I like big, huge knives. So for people who don't, well, not everyone's perfect. But uh, <laughs> I kid, don't get butthurt. Um, even if you do, just leave it in the comments and tell me how much I suck because I love uh, reading and replying to those messages anyway. It gives me a lot of fun stuff to do. Like someone asked me the other day, oh, you should take that paracord and go hang yourself. And I was like, wow, you guys are so fucking sweet. Um, and so I told them that I wanted to uh, <laughs> keep living and make awesome YouTube videos for you to not like. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun there. But anyway... That was my everyday carry update for January 2016. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'm out. <laughs>